So it's melted now that we had our first winter snowfall here in southeastern Michigan and the first opportunity to drive the Tesla Model 3 in those kind of conditions. So let's talk about it. So about a week ago Saturday, we had our first major snowfall here in Michigan. It ended up being more than a few inches of total accumulation. Snowed early on a Saturday, took a break, and really picked up into the dinner time, evening time. And it just so happened that we had a kids activity to do that evening. And so we left the house with snow on the road, accumulated on the road, to drive about 25 minutes south for a, for a soccer game. First time taking the Tesla in the snow, covered roads, slick conditions, really the first major snowfall in Michigan altogether. So it took a lot of people by surprise. We saw multiple folks get it out, at least two accidents uh, with first responders and stuff there. Always in, in a seasonal place like this, the first time it snows, everybody gets their winter driving skills back and so on. And I was really curious to see how this would do. So of course we have the Model 3 performance, performance tuned, big wheels, performance tires, and so on. And it was kind of a mixed experience, I would say. The car overall, I would say, felt pretty pretty sure. It slipped like any vehicle would slip, but all-wheel drive and power distribution basically took care of that. Braking seemed fine to me as well. No more, no more general slipping, applying full brake, sliding a little bit, letting the ABS kind of do its thing and crunch through. I don't think it was any different than any other recent sports vehicle that we've we've had. For example, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio that we got rid of in order to get this um, in order to get this Tesla. I really liked that car by the way. I think that car in the wintertime just chewed through snow and it was very, very fun to drive. It felt very safe and it felt very sure. And I was expecting to give up a little bit of that in the Model 3, but for driving, steering, general stopping and all of that sort of thing, even in the Model 3 performance, it really wasn't that bad. I think as a family in, in future snowfalls or any more snowfall than that, when we have the opportunity, we probably will just leave this car parked and just choose to drive the Explorer anyway. But in a pinch, I think this is gonna be okay for a general Michigan type of snowfall. And of course, if we get anything anything major, It'll stay parked, it'll stay garaged, and so on. But the one thing that really caught me by surprise, and I didn't really think about it until the first time it happened, was the auto braking coming off of the accelerator pedal, the regenerative braking. So I've done three different advanced drivers training in my life, and I think I mentioned that in a prior video. Uh, and in, after we got married some years ago, we went out west to Vegas at the former uh, Rupert Bragg Smith Chevrolet driving school. We did a few days uh, track driving, uh, learning in class and such there. And working in the auto industry here, I've had the opportunity to do test drive training for two major or two of our major North American auto manufacturers at their proving grounds and such. And so that involved a lot of skid pad training and vehicle control kind of stuff. So I know most people feel right on the surveys, everybody thinks they're a good driver. I like to actually think that I am a pretty good driver, that I, I, have, a, I have a feel and I've, I've had some training for how to, how to manage a vehicle that's slipping, um, how to steer out of some things and, and, and that sort of stuff. In general conditions, when things start to slide, when things start to feel a little unsecure, the natural tendency, the, the thing to do is to come off the accelerator pedal don't accelerate obviously, but also don't brake. Just kind of let the vehicle coast and let the vehicle settle. And of course, in a Tesla, you can't do that. So as soon as you come off that accelerator pedal, the vehicle is braking. And I love the one pedal driving. I think it's been awesome. I think I've really adapted to driving this way. And out of maybe barely one or two out of every 10 stopping events, do I, do I actually come over to the brake pedal? because I've gotten the feel for when, when to come off it, how much distance I need relative to how fast I'm driving. Um, I think learning the one pedal driving and the auto braking and so on, it's very natural and it, come, and it comes pretty smoothly. However, when you're in a slippery condition and you come off of that pedal to let the vehicle coast and maybe to steer, steer into a skid and make sure that you're maintaining control, having the brakes bite is like the last thing that you really wanna have happen. And driving down the freeway, 
doing that really caught me by surprise. I didn't, I didn't even think about it because again, the, the one pedal driving, the auto braking had been so natural to be in a condition where I didn't want it to happen what was a little bit disconcerting. And so I think you have to be very cautious how you come off of the accelerator pedal but at the same time, sometimes if you're starting to slip, you want to come all the way off right away. But you do that, the brakes start to bite, and then the car itself starts to slide um, slide even more. And it felt like the vehicle was doing some types of compensation. I want to do some more research and Googling and read some more takes on other folks' uh, understanding or engineering level understanding of what exactly the Tesla is doing in that slippery winter driving conditions. Um, I'm pretty sure that it felt to me like the vehicle was responding. It was braking, yes, but it was it was trying to maintain its sensibility, I guess you could say, in the lane, not slide out of control. And I would hope that the software, the sensors, and so on are all tuned that you're not going to end up losing control coming off of the accelerator in a slippery condition with that auto braking applied. So as we were driving, I had my wife looking to say like, wow, I wonder if there's a way, never had a reason to look before, I wonder if there's a way to shut this off and basically drive without any of the auto braking. And ultimately what we found just with a little cursory searching is it doesn't seem to be the case that you can, that the, the regenerative braking and the way the vehicle is designed to do that is a big part of the electric vehicle about managing, about managing elements of the electric vehicle particularly without regenerative braking, you would have a very, very hard time uh, maintaining range on your battery. That, that what you're getting back from regenerative braking makes, a big, makes up a big part of, of maintaining, maintaining your range. And there would be a whole bunch of um, engineering reasons why you wouldn't want to be able to shut that off. And hence why just looking through the general menus and so on, we really didn't find a way to disable it. The only thing that you get is some controls on the stopping mode where you can set under under vehicle driving stopping mode you get creep roll and hold but that doesn't really affect anything about what happens when you come off of the accelerator it affects what happens as the vehicle is coming to a stop only will it fully apply the brakes and stay in position will it stop to a certain point and then operate effectively as if the vehicle itself was in neutral or a regular vehicle was in neutral or will it creep which is essentially idle forward like a like a gas engine vehicle would do if you come off the brake if you come off of the brake in drive you're going to you're going to creep and you're going to roll so there doesn't seem to be any effect of those controls on the actual stopping as you come off of the accelerator pedal so it'll be interesting to see next time we get some more snow i'd actually like to kind of go out on some side roads and, and experiment and play around a little more deliberately the driving that we did that night was was directly to get directly to get to the place we were going and then because of the additional accumulation and needing to come, not a lengthy, but we had to drive a little bit on the freeway to get back. I wasn't inclined to, to experiment too much. I just wanted to get home and basically get off the road. So first impression summary, I think it'll do pretty well, hopefully on par with the Stelvio that we did have. But the again, that, that auto braking effect in a slippery condition really took me by surprise because as I think as a trained driver, that understands or is trained a bit on on bringing bringing a skidding vehicle under control, drifting, and in some of those sorts of things, it really wasn't uh, it really wasn't great. It really wasn't natural to have the vehicle apply the brakes, have the extra slide, have the faith that the car is doing the right thing, and, and I guess I, I wanted I would prefer to have more of the vehicle under my control in those conditions than to have the have the faith in the vehicle that it's that it's going to do the right thing. And of course, we didn't really try any autopilot and any of that sort of stuff um, with accumulation on the road. Uh, that's probably the, the very, very last time that you would want to try to use any of that stuff when there, there's there's snow on the road blocking the lines and the vehicle's having trouble. It was even blipping in and out intermittently on the freeway on the ride home, whether it would let us go into um, autopilot, auto steer or not. So it's not worth the, the potential risks. To, to let the vehicle try to do something in conditions beyond its, um, maybe beyond its capabilities. But they don't just sell these things to people in California, right? They sell them around the globe now. They sell them up north. They sell them, they sell them to people that are driving in these conditions. And so I'm definitely going to do some more research and find some other takes on 
on, on what Tesla does or how Tesla manages the design and engineering and the software and so on for these vehicles when it comes to winter conditions. And if I find anything interesting in conjunction with maybe the next time we're able to get out and drive in those conditions, I'll definitely do another video and update. So thanks for watching. If there's any questions about it, uh, the experience of driving the car and, and so on like that, please go ahead and post in the comments. And I'll be back with more Tesla stuff pretty soon. Thanks for watching.